Good morning, my dear students. Today, we are going to talk a very important topic that is congenital telepis equinoferous, that is CTEV. So this is one of the very important congenital problem we often encounter in the, in the children coming to our OPD or emergency. So what it is, we'll talk, what are the various deformities, how to diagnose it, what are treatment modalities, and how to follow up. Now let us talk what congenital telepis mean to us. The word is a Latin term. Telepis means tell us, means ankle. It speaks about the ankle. And pace means foot. And equino means horse. A virus may inverted and have So telepis equinovirus basically horse shoe, horse shoe, and it is in the ankle and foot. So deformities is in ankle and foot. And the virus is also a part of it in subclavian. It is also known as club foot because it gives cross the resemblance with the club foot. So we'll talk about the deformities which is happening at the ankle and at the foot. Well, what are the deformities here? If you see the child with this deformity, what are the things there? One is cavus, as you say, adduction of the forefoot, varus in the subcranial joint, and equinus at the ankle joint. So this is a classical picture of CTV. We will find this is equinus, where the foot is, the heel is lying high. This is varus, and this is normally the sensi, the convexity in the outer border, concavity in the inner border, the creases are very deep, these are the various creases, and foot is lying inwards or inverted. So these are the four classical components of the CTV, but it is true sometimes. Now, additional deformities may be associated with it. That is internal rotations of the tibia, what is known as tibia vera. Sometimes they do subluxes on it. It is a part of this process that the joint is subluxated and navicular head or navicular and telus is becoming, telar head is becoming more prominent in anterior aspect. Well, what about the incidence? How much it is prevalent in our society? As you all know, this is not that uncommon and that term but common also. Almost one in out of 1,000 life parts. So bilateral deformities is seen almost 50% of the cases. Most of the cases are sporadic in nature. Families having this, it may also run in families. There is history, there is also uh, incidence that it runs in families. Because of the fact that there is autosomal involvement, the autosomal dominant trait with incomplete penetrance is the sequence. That is why it runs in family also. So what is the pathogenesis? The cons actually, we still do not exactly know who is in fault, whether the soft tissue is fault or whether the bone is in fault. There are theories that the problems arises in the soft tissue. As such, the soft tissue in the middle side of the foot is contracted, is short, then that of the soft tissue is in lateral aspect. Uh, whether the soft tissue is secondarily involved because of this primary involvement in the bones. So there is a gun. There is yet it is point just to be clear, but even then the primary germ 
plasm defect in the telus. Basically, in telus, this is one of the theory. Continue to have the plantar flexions and inversions of the telus, and subsequent subtu changes are sending taking place in the musculotendinous junction. This is the theory. It speaks that the problem is arising from the bone and subsequently subtissue is involved. Whereas other theories talks in different way. It says the subtissue uh, deformities is the primary deformity. That means contractures at the middle side of this foot is primarily involved and secondary changes are taking place in the bone. Now, basically, while this child is coming to you in the child in the OPD, a child a craft food clinic, CTV clinic, basically there are two types of your foods are being seen. One is that it is appreciably correctable. That means if you stress it, the food, then a perceptible range of your corrections is possible. Whereas in other group, it's very difficult to correct. From this clinical entity and the behavior, we can subclassify on the clinical basis into two groups. One is easily correctable, one is very difficult to correct. So, so we can we can group in two ways. One is subtle, another is somehow rigid. There are some score systems which is important for the diagnosis but more so important for the evaluation, post manipulations or post treatment evaluations, this is called Piranis course. This course speaks in different way and there is scoring systems and this is a part of your analysis for subsequent, subsequent uh, uh, post, post manipulations and grading. So this is called Piranis score, but we are not going to go details but what is more important to understand in the clinical pictures I have said, we have discussed the medial it is curved, concave, outwards it is convex, heel is lying high, creases are very prominent, sometimes calf muscles are very soft, so smooth, uh, calf are, are soft, so that way we can grade it, A, B, C. That is a grading from the Pyrenees course. By, by and large, the fissures are high, high rise heel, medial concavity, lateral convexity, then also abundant deep creases. All these fissures are important clinical entity. This is the part of this your um, Pyrenees course. So these are these classical findings of the Piranis scores. Now, what is the treatment of choice? The treatment of definitely the aim of the treatment is to main, uh, to correct the deformity, make the full plantry gate. That means while he is working, he should work on a foot on the planter surface. The aim is the to normal, pain-free, functional food. And this is to be achieved many a times possible by conservative treatment, non party and most widely accepted technique today is positive technique. We'll talk about that. So what Ponsidi method speaks about? The Ponsidi method is basically the aim is to do the corrections of the deformities in gradual way. If you are stressing the soft tissue in the correct way, a soft tissue of the medial size gets elongated. And if it is done in sequential manners, in a correct put maneuvers, it's leads to corrections of the deformity. So the manipulations techniques are very important how to do leverage on where and what to start first all are the very important steps in Ponchetti's technique whereas the other kite technique other techniques were also existent earlier because this problem was 
in this mankind for long time the various maneuvers available and various maneuvers being tried I have some problems but as of now throughout the world the world is accepted this quantitative techniques nowadays and it gives a predictable result also that is why we are discussing quantitative technique not other techniques which are winning up which are nowadays of course in the bars of absolute so these techniques should to be exercised in a sequential manner in weekly basis so this is a techniques it shows this how stage one we can we can do it what are the steps we need to follow what we should correct the first the drop of the first finger or uh, toe correct some decavus and sequentially do these are the various types of maneuvers we have to encounter uh, to continue and this should to be done weekly basis and usually it takes around 5 to 6 weeks sometime sometime it will less and after receiving the corrections by these techniques one should maintain the corrected foot in a splint called stin back foot abduction splint this is very important because of this fact that the corrections being achieved by ponsetis technique in sequential manner can get it reverse back that means if you unable to maintain it with the splint it may also go go back so that is why it is always important to achieve the corrections by ponsetis then also sequence uh, later on maintain with the help of your abduction base this is called stin back techniques which should be maintained or applied by the child for minimum 20 hours of a day only one night day any time minimum 3 months and then while the child starts walking we can remove it in the day time but night time we can apply it another for two to three years now does surgery has a role to play in the technique of ponsetti uh, most of the corrections can be achieved but what many attempts cannot be achieved by the ponsetti technique is equinus part sometime for the correction that be equinus we may need to go for a the operations known as tendon axis of means the posterior tibialis uh, the uh, tendon achilles tendon tenotomy should to be done that means once it is tactics can have all the corrections we have us uh, the equina uh, the uh, adduction have us all these things will be corrected most of the time but what left many a time is the part of equinus so surgical intervention is sometime needed but it is not a major surgery can be done as a opd basis without anesthesia also but however if it fails to achieve this desired result what left to us it is surgical insist surgical treatment this surgery is basically while it fails we need to do for operations this is called pm posterior medial soft tissue release operations posterior medial soft tissue release operations this operation is basically done to lengthen these contracted structures the tendonocalis and the medial structures the tendons flexor hallucis longus flexor digitorum longus tibialis posterior all these tendons should to be elongated excess but subsequently if the patients come late say around 4 years then some other operative treatment is necessary where the only ponsi technique is not possible like trial osteotomy in the lateral side cuboid and the calcaneal part then again if very late cases neglect is coming up then triple arthrosis are the other choice but conventionally the child 
which is coming within a year before starting walking, this child should always be subjected for the conscious techniques. And if it fails to receive it, then of course surgical treatment is a need. So in nutshell, how will manage a case of your CTV is being discussed. And if you do have any questions, you can you can ask me. Now, this is a, 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 a phrases from your Gita. Gita is not a book of religion. It is a book of philosophy. And you go through it. Thank you. Thank you very much.